Welcome back to Flex Bone 101. And today we're going to talk about busting flex bone myths. Uh, this is something that I get asked fairly frequently uh, in some of the things that we're going to talk about. It also came up due to the coaching situation at South Carolina. Uh, originally, I was going to make a video before they hired someone uh, campaigning for Jeff Monken. Uh, however, They've hired Shane Beamer and nothing against him. Um, however, the response, I think, to the fact that Jeff Monken's name was even floated out there was really surprising. And some of the stuff that we saw looked like this, right? There were tweets that said things like, live look at Columbia two days after the Gamecocks hiring Jeff Monken. A list of preferences with Monken at the bottom behind literally anyone else. Bring back Muschamp and disband the football program. If you hire Jeff Monken, you will lose this fan base and be run out of town. Directed at the athletic director. I'm going to go ahead and speak for the whole fan base and say not a single one of us wants Jeff Monken as our coach. Hire Napier or Beamer, be done with it, and let's get to recruiting. And where do I mail all of my Gamecock gear if the athletic director hires Jeff Monken? I guess I could just burn it and save on postage. So those are some pretty brash things to say. And as a flexbone coach, as an option coach, you could say, I took this personally. So let's dive into South Carolina before we go into why South Carolina would be privileged to hire a flexbone coach, much less one of the best in Jeff Monken. Um, I'll just go out and say right now, I may not have any friends in South Carolina left after this video. So fair warning. Sorry, Steve Kurt, right? So in my recent memory, South Carolina has been essentially a retirement home for coaches. Uh, Steve Spurrier, Lou Holtz, and a bunch of people I don't really care about, right? South Carolina has not been on the football radar for much of my 32 years on this planet. So I took a step further because since I didn't know much about South Carolina and I was going to make this video, I had to learn a little bit more about them. So as a general overview, uh, they've been a program for 128 years. They have about a 500 win percentage. They've had one conference title, one division title, an abysmal bowl record, one Heisman Trophy winner. And yes, while their bowl record is abysmal, I will fully acknowledge, as per the picture on the right, that one of those wins was against my Michigan Wolverines. Actually, I think two now that I'm thinking about it. However, that hit from Jadavian Clowney was one of the most disgusting hits I've ever seen in a football game. So all that being said, you notice that there's one division title in the SEC East from 2010. Let me just remind you who is in the SEC East. There's no Alabama. There's no Auburn. There's no LSU. They get Florida, Georgia, Tennessee, Kentucky, Missouri, and Vanderbilt. So if you're telling me they have only won this division once since joining the SEC, I'll leave that for what it is. So in recent memory, the Gamecocks have not been great. Uh, they had one season in 2017 where they got nine wins. And, you know, some middle-of-the-road and or horrendous seasons uh, mixed in. So we're not exactly talking about a program that has a lot of um, a tradition of excellence. So that's where we go into the flexbone myths. Because, as we mentioned with all those tweets, the South Carolina fan base was not happy about this. So I could have come on here and ranted about how, 
you know, they had no idea what they're talking about and defending the offense that I know and love. Uh, but anyone can do that. So I did what I always do, and I went to the numbers. Uh, and that's part of the reason this video took me longer than I was hoping, is I crunched a whole lot of data. I've spent a lot of time on collegefootballdata.com, uh, which is a great website for all of your college football statistics needs. Uh, shout out to Blue Scar, who is a Michigan fan as well, uh, who helps run our college football subreddit risk team. And when I did that, the, the stats were surprising. So let's jump into some of these myths. So our first myth is that it will hurt recruiting. I'm sure that's something that almost everyone has heard. Uh, it's probably the first thing that people will pound the drum on. Um, well, let's carry on to the data. Turns out that from 2009 to 2019, South Carolina was eighth in the SEC as far as the average star rating of their players. Now, there's a few caveats here. It's hard to compare with other flexbone schools. You have Georgia Tech from when they were running it under Paul Johnson and the service academies in uh, the FCS. Excuse me, FBS. And the service academies aren't going to be getting f and competing with four and five star talent. However, the point I wanted to make with this graph is South Carolina is not doing that great recruiting as it is. They're doing worse than Tennessee and just a touch better than Ole Miss. So if you're going to keep trying to compete against the Alabamas and Georgias of the world, you need to do something different. Otherwise, you're just praying that something happens or there's sanctions or there's some shakeup to improve your football program. And let's face it, at this point, South Carolina is the third most exciting team in the state of South Carolina, behind Clemson and Coastal. <clears throat> you have to acknowledge where you're starting at if you're the Gamecocks. What the Flexbone also gives you is a chance to recruit kids to the SEC that otherwise wouldn't have a chance. You don't need the big flashy five stars that everyone is recruiting. If you get a few of them, great. But otherwise, there are, are tons of Flexbone players across the country that have worked in the offense, want to play in the offense at the next level. And if you're telling them they can go to one of the best conferences in football, I think you're going to get a lot of kids and you're not going to be competing against everyone else in your conference for those kids. So I think there's an opportunity there. Look at what Georgia Tech did. Uh, look at what the service academies have done. There is a method to that madness. And just because South Carolina fans can't accept that doesn't mean you shouldn't hire Jeff Monkin. I have a big data sheet. South Carolina is middle of the road in everything. If you're looking at player height, player weight, player ranking, you're not getting the best kids. And South Carolina is not a big talent producer. So you have to be competing against other people anyway. You may as well give yourself an advantage where you can. Next, myth number two. The offense doesn't work at the college level. You can imagine how much I love this. And it's not true. And I anecdotally could tell you from the service academies in Georgia Tech that it does work. But I wanted to really compare where South Carolina has been to recent flexbone memory. So first, let's look at offensive success rate. So to help you read these graphs, I've made them consistent. You will see that Army, Navy, South Carolina, and Georgia Tech are in their respective colors. Depending on what device you're viewing this on, I wanted to make sure you could tell them apart. Black and Navy are really close, so Army is a dotted line. Hopefully, that makes sense to you. Per college football data. 
Success rate is an efficiency metric that determines the success of a play. Successful plays meet one of the following criteria. The offense scored. First downs, which gain at least 50% of the yards to go. Second downs, which gain at least 70% of the yards to go. And third and fourth downs, which gain at least 100% of the yards to go. So a play is successful if it essentially gets you most of the way to a first down early or gets you a first down or scores. You'll see overall how these are calculated between the high threes and the low fives. The overall numbers aren't super important. What I wanted to display from this was the trend, right? If you look at South Carolina, for the most part, it is below those three option teams, right? Their offense hasn't been successful. And there's proof that at the FBS level that there is success. And when you think that they're playing like talent against like talent, right? Sure, the navies and the armies of the world don't play in the SEC, but if you can recruit SEC talent to your school and be more efficient, those numbers are going to go up if you're South Carolina. The next graph is points per opportunity. Points per opportunity is a measure of every time your offense touches the ball, what is the average number of points you're going to get on each drive each time your offense touches the ball? So again, same color, same color scheme. Again, general trend, South Carolina's at the bottom. Every other Flexbone team is outperforming them other than Jeff Monken's first year. And our last graph is offensive predicted points added. What this measure does is it uses expected points to measure the outcome of a play. It takes the expected points value from the beginning of each play and subtracts it from the expected points value resulting from the play. So that's a lot of mumbo jumbo. If that doesn't quite make sense, I recommend you look up the definition. However, again, the trend being South Carolina is far below the other flexbone teams. All of this goes to say, don't tell me that this offense doesn't work at the college level. The academies and Georgia Tech are showing not only is it working, but it is working at a much better rate than whatever garbage South Carolina has thrown out for offense since 2014. Myth number three. Can't be successful on third down. Clearly, if you're running the ball, you can't be successful on third down. Here's what I say to that. If you're more successful on first and second down, your third downs become much more manageable. Let's see what the data says. We're looking at third down percentage. Again, same team, same line, same colors. Notice that outside of Jeff Monken's first year and a dip by Navy in 2018, in general, the Flexbone teams have a better third down percentage than South Carolina, right? If you get behind the sticks, if you get penalties, if you get sacked, all those factor in to if you're successful on first down. But the big reason that flexbone teams tend to have better third down percentages is that they get it done on first and second down. And the more times you convert third down, the more opportunities you have to score and keep a drive alive. Myth number four, it turns the ball over too much. Right? A lot of people that maybe played the offense in high school, maybe played against it, maybe just, you know, if they caught a Georgia Tech or a service academy game over the years, maybe they saw a few fumbles and they didn't like it. Let's see what the data says. We have turnovers by year. I specified turnovers because obviously flexbone teams are not throwing the ball that often. So I included fumbles lost and interceptions. You'll notice... This is probably the best graph South Carolina has had up to this point. And it's probably middle of the road, right? Some years there's more, some years there's less. Sometimes it's personnel, sometimes it's schedule, right? If you take all those factors into account, I'd say that the Flexbone offense probably has the same amount of turnovers as every other one. You're going to have your good games, you're going to have your bad games. But I think if you were a South Carolina fan that was against the Jeff Monk and higher, and you were thinking the ball was going to be turned over too much, you would have expected all the flexbone teams to be much higher than South Carolina, 
whereas that has not been the case. In fact, and by this graph in 2018 and 2020, South Carolina actually had more turnovers than all of the Flexbone teams. So just another thing to take into account. And our last myth. It's a boring old dinosaur offense that doesn't throw enough. Honestly, there's no graph that I could put up that can dispute this. If you think it's boring, uh, that's your problem. It's an opinion. However, as a coach, as a fan, as a flexbone evangelist, um, the only thing that matters is winning and losing, right? You're... Up to this point, South Carolina has done everything it can to be just like everyone else in its conference and beyond, and it's not working. So if you're satisfied being a 500 football team, great. I think most schools, most fan bases want a winner. And how long has it been since South Carolina's rivals have been scared of it, right? Outside of the fact that maybe it's an in-state matchup if you're Clemson. Right. Remember all those teams for Georgia Tech, even when Georgia Tech was bad or having a down year, teams were afraid of Georgia Tech and it required a lot of practice time to go against and prepare for because even in their worst year, if a defense isn't ready for a flex bone offense, it's going to be ugly. Right. Any high school coach can tell you that, you know, the teams that are well practiced against it and which ones are not. So those are the myths on the Flexbone offense compared to South Carolina. Now, again, I'm not against the Shane Beamer hire. I'm sure he's a great coach. However, I think the vitriol from a fan base such as that, when they should be privileged to have a coach like Jeff Monken, is unacceptable as far as I'm concerned. And I'm sure this video is going to stir up a lot of hate, right? So in the comments, right? Tell me I'm right. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me what data you'd want to see, right? If you want to go comb through the data and find some statistics on why I'm wrong or why something else might be a better fit or just about anything else, right? Let me know because if it's not South Carolina, someone else is going to make that hire of a flexbone coach in FCS, All right? Which schools do you think it is? Who's going to benefit from this? That's what I want to hear in the comments. Always don't forget, like and subscribe below, and I'll talk to you guys soon.